You're listening to B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro, where we share topics that will inspire business growth and help you stay ahead of advances in technology before they become mainstream. This episode is sponsored by Ingram Micro Expantage, the game-changing platform that will transform your business potential and reshape how customers see you. Hello and welcome to this very special edition of Zas the Mic at the Global Cloud and Innovation Summit here in Las Vegas. Today with me, I'm very proud to announce that I've got Sanjib Sahu, the Chief Digital Officer of Ingram Micro, and the new Senior Vice President of Cloud Blue, Udav Gupta. Hey, Ben. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you for having us here. Oh, you're very welcome, sir. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Great conference so far, really interesting insights, amazing announcements from Ingram Micro. Love to hear the news about the connection between Cloud Blue and everything. So, without further ado, let's get deep into our topic. Sounds good. So, today we're going to cover about digital fitness. Uh, we're going to be looking at a culture of innovation and how key that is to organizations moving forward. We also want to look at how customers and partners uh, need to think like a chief value officer. And then the experience economy, of course, which is the driver of everything 2023 and onwards. However, for a little icebreaker, Sanjib, if you were a SaaS product, what would you be and why? Workday. Workday? Yeah. Okay. The reason for that is digital transformation is all about people. Mm -hmm. And Workday helps to give a canvas to people. So I find it useful to look at it. Fantastic. That's a very good answer. And uh, for yourself, Adel? I'd, I'd pick Zora. Yeah? Because everybody's moving to a subscription economy and Zora is the heart of it. Excellent. I mean, if, if I was to pick, I would probably be something like Grammarly or Hemingway app, uh, you know, to help you reach your creativity. If I was being slightly arrogant, I might say Notion because I'm a connector. <laughs> but anyway, um, so let's get into digital fitness. Now, this is a real hot topic for us here at Cloud Blue and Ingram Micro. So first questions first. I love the term digital fitness, but I want you to explain it a little bit more to our audience. So, you know, how do you apply it in your day to day, Sanjib? Yeah, so like physical fitness is a lifestyle change. You cannot be fit one day and unfit other day. You have to have a regime which makes you constantly fit. Mm -hmm. There's no stop sign of being fit. No. Similarly, digital fitness is a mindset change. Yeah. You cannot be digitally fit and then unfit because as I said, digital transformation or digital journey doesn't stop. Mm. This is not about technology. Mm. So what happens is it is ongoing and continuous. However, we need to assess the right fitness regime for success. Mm -hmm. Let's say I, am, I weigh 500 pounds and I want to start running five miles from tomorrow. It's not going to work. No, no, it's not possible. The fitness regime has to mirror what state of maturity of fitness I am. Yeah. Similarly, organizations run behind shiny technology. What is the hottest cool thing? They need to first assess where they are in their digital maturity, mm -hmm. how they can be remain fit and constantly, incrementally have a regime to be more fit. Mm -hmm. And what means fit is that it is to do with the DNA and the spirit of the organization mm -hmm. where you can embrace change, eliminate fear, fail fast, and truly have a DNA that can focus on customer experience and keep moving, keep moving. And just drive these wheels forward, right? That customer experience is so key. It's so key for us to keep our people close to our core, to our heart of the business that we're trying to build. Absolutely. Now, now Udav, um, so I've heard you talk about mindset as well. You know, I've had a few town halls with you. It's something really interesting for me. And you've said, you know, mindset over tech all day. Um, and this leads to really empowering teams. So, you know, how, how are we doing that in Cloud Blue now? Uh, there's different things, right? Like to Sanjeev's point, Digital, uh, it's digital fitness is all about a regime. Mm -hmm. But you also don't start exercising with the most toughest thing first, right? You basically start taking step by step. You take the right equipments and you start building that up, right? And I think that's a part of the mindset. Um, you know, as people start doing digital transformations, there's several platforms that become available to them to do these transformations. But you need to basically start at the right level and then go on. The beauty is with things like Cloud Blue and other digital platforms that are in the marketplace spaces, uh, they kind of take you gradually through the steps yeah. one by one in a well-defined, in a best practices way, right? So that's the big thing about 
not only your mindset, but taking the collective mindset of the industry and bringing it together. Also, it's very foundational, right? We've got to look at those solid foundations, those cornerstones of our business, you know, touching that digital journey, make sure that it's, it's everything that our clients want, listening, actively listening and bringing back to them and making sure they get what they want. Now, um, again, we've, we've talked about this terminology before, the chief value officer. Uh, Sanjib, I believe you invented this, or at least you popularized it with me. So again, can we just yeah. understand a little bit more, you know? Yeah. The focus on value is very important, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at digital transformations, more than 80% fail. They don't create the value that was meant for, for a variety of reasons. The market changed, mm -hmm. mindset, culture. But when we are looking at a transformation plan, we got to focus on value more. But value doesn't have to only come from business or operations people. Mm. It has to come and cascade in every aspect of the organization. Like engineering, you writing a piece of code, keep value in mind. Value-driven development, follow the money. Mm -hmm. So what I want is I call everybody, be your own CEO. Be your own chief value officer. Every little thing that you do, mm -hmm. focus on value. And if we create that mindset of focus on value, then we'll look at things very differently. It's not about launching a checklist. It is about delivering a smile to our customers, delivering value. Yeah. And if you keep on focusing on the customer and deliver value, results will come. And that is a huge paradigm shift because technologists only think about technology. Exactly. Exactly. They try to do, oh, cool in their mind is, let's work on the next greatest AI algorithm next. It doesn't matter at all. What is cool today will not be cool tomorrow. But value is value. Revenue growth is revenue growth. Mm -hmm. That's why I think everybody should be a chief value officer. Yeah. And, and the best part about that mindset it is as a multiplication factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have two people thinking about themselves as chief value officers, Three into three is nine, not three plus three is not six, right? So it can have a very good exponential value if people adopt that mindset. It's brilliant. And value really isn't shiny. Value is permanent. Value is here forever, right? right. What, what today is shiny, tomorrow might be dull. And we don't want that. And, and I love what you said there, Sanjib, about connecting code back to value, about connecting developers back to value, about making technologists more engaged with the work that they do, but the impact that it has on their audience, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, so how, how can we connect this, this idea of the chief value officer to this concept of moving beyond transaction and into interaction, right? It's something really important for today. It's more human. Yeah. So interaction create, needs trust, mm -hmm. right? Stickiness, loyalty. Transaction in a platform, you have a catalog, you buy, sell, you are done. It doesn't create loyalty. Mm -hmm. What I explained is goods, services, commodities, can be tangible, intangible, mm -hmm. but the experience has to be memorable. That's how you create customer stickiness and loyalty. Yeah. Instead of having our customers transacting in multiple marketplaces, we created this platform where they can actually interact, mm -hmm. have connection with us, get help from us, make them better by the insights, mm -hmm. make them profitable through the data. It's almost like a $50 billion company mm -hmm. behind them to make them better. That is an interaction. That is a connection. Wow. That is the trust. And through the platform, we are taking friction out of the path to purchase and making it a seamless connection. And we think that that will cascade to value by improving customers more, doing revenue with us, share a basket. But our belief is focus on the customer, mm -hmm. revenue will come. Yeah. That's how that value mindset comes here. Odaf, what are we going to do with stickiness? How are we going to increase the stickiness and, and really sort of push the cloud blue brand? I, I the think there's an important point to feed off here, right? Uh, the transaction has always remained the same. Yeah. It's the experience that basically has transformed over the period of time, right? Um, and if you start thinking about stickiness, let's take even nothing in our own world, right? But just take something that we live in day in and day out. Let's say just take Uber, right? The path of going from a place A to place B using a vehicle that is driven by somebody is the transaction that's remained constant, right? Mm -hmm. But the experience of basically being, you know, going into the app, 
calling the Uber, knowing what kind of rating you have, what kind of rating the driver has, what you know, what are your likes if you have in a profile, what are the driver's likes in a profile, like that small 10-minute ride to a large 30-minute ride can be changed into an experience from a transaction, right? And the stickiness comes from all the added metadata, all the added insights that you can bring into that transaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of driving of the experience is about how simple can you make getting to the transaction, but it's also how smooth and how energetic, how creative can you make the process of that transaction? See, that's a really interesting concept. And if, and if we think about this phrase, why is Sunday night so different to Monday morning, Udav? Like, what can we do to bridge that gap, right? It's really important for us as digital platforms, as solutions providers, to make Monday better, right? Because yeah. we love Monday. Make Monday a fun day. Yeah, make Monday fun day. Right. Um, there are many things, right? So to begin with, people come from... I think it's more over the weekend that people get more soaked into the whole consumer experience mm -hmm. because kind of the to-do list always comes out over the weekend and people are like going through the to-do list over the weekend. Uh, and then they expect the same simplicities when they come back to the office on Monday, right? Right from things like, hey, I could do this thing over an app over the weekend. Why do I need to basically log in into 10 different systems to do it, mm -hmm. right? Simple things like that to more complex things of like, well, when I basically had to do X, Y, and Z task, on the consumer side, the system told me what to do. Whereas when I basically am doing it on my regular day job, why do I have to basically tell the system what to do? Right? It's madness, no? Exactly, right? So that transformation that needs to happen to bring in those early concepts of consumerization into the enterprise world, into the business world, is what will single-handedly make a Sunday, a fun day, a Monday, an even more fun day. We deserve it, don't we? We, we deserve do. Monday to be we the do. funnest day. We deserve our jobs to be the best jobs that we can do. Absolutely. We really want to deliver. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we want to bring consumerization to distribution. Amazing. What is Why this is important is because we work on the one of the most complex, large ecosystems in the world, technology. Mm -hmm. We touch 90% of the world's population. It's amazing. Today, technology dictates our lives. Mm -hmm. We wake up with a phone. We sleep with a phone. Not too close. Not too close, but separately. Yeah. But On we, the bedside cabinet. Most of us look at the phone and then keep it aside, right? If we can have that seamless, easy experience mm. in distribution, the world will change. And why not? Give that. Why deprive our partners of that experience? It's a lot. We have the responsibility to do that. That's why we are here. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful aim, Odav. No, it's really wonderful. Yeah. Like it, I, I keep on going back to that word in my head. We deserve our jobs to be better, right? And especially right in our in our world, where we are high on transactions. Yeah, right. The volume of transactions that we process is so much. If you don't make it simple, you're basically going to drown the associate that's working on it, the vendor that's working on it, the partner that's working on it, right? And coming back to your earlier question, a transaction will remain a transaction, but the experience around it is absolutely important. That's what gets people excited about it. Yeah, and, and we genuinely, you know, we hold those commercial experiences that we have as consumers really close to our hearts. Absolutely. We love our phones. We love our watches. We love everything that we have. We also love our jobs and we love delivering. We love to make things happen, right? And that, that connection deserves to grow because actually there, it's almost infinite. Absolutely. I don't think we can really say that. So, look, you know, we, we've talked about the difference between Sunday night and Monday morning. Um, you know, and then when we're moving into this world of the subscription economy, right, we, we need to sort of understand how we're going to measure our success and how we're going to measure and understand what we're doing as organizations and as platforms like Cloudblue and Ingram Micro. So... I've got a rather cheeky question. I, I quite like it. I like, uh, I like little acronyms. Why is ARR the gold standard for us in this terminology? What does it mean for the audience out there who maybe understand the term, but they don't understand how it applies to what we're trying to do? Sanjib. Sure. So if you look at we are moving the, uh, more to a consumption model where our customers consume technology in more as a service. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that everybody wants stickiness. Everybody wants to own the end user. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a repeatable, guaranteed way of showing business value. Okay. If you look at today, most of the organizations are valued based on 
repeatable recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. Today, a single Ingram Micro solution has six products, mm -hmm. which means that it's hardware, software, services all coming together. And if we can move it to a subscription model and have a recurring basis to it, the way we consume, mm -hmm. that is very important because it eases the way our customers want to consume it. Mm -hmm. The goal is to actually move towards that model as we actually create a unified experience of all things technology and we can create that model because it's not us. Mm -hmm. It's our customers who demand that. And it's a win-win situation for us. You can have so many organizations from moving to that model right now for the same reason. I mean, Udav, how far can the as-a-service world go? Oh, it's going to go very far. I'll give you a reason why it will go far. The best part about ARR is the predictability that you have at the start of the month mm -hmm. of what's going to be in your, in your revenue recognition uh, bucket, right? And that's beautiful. Like, Imagine every day morning you get up and you know exactly on the first of the month what revenue you basically captured this month and what is the delta you need to go after. Every time you basically get a deal, instead of taking the deal up front, you basically now got a deal that's spread over the tenure and it's every time giving you money into your revenue recognition. That's beautiful, right? And then the best part is, Imagine you basically walking up to somebody and saying, hey, give me the money all up front and I haven't delivered you anything. And in this model as a service, you're basically telling, I'll take money when I've delivered you a service and you're happy with the service. The important part is that, again, bring it back to a transaction experience. Earlier, it would just be a transaction. You want something, I have something, I give you something. Mm -hmm. Now it's not, no longer that. It's like, you want something, I have something but I'm going to make the experience of you using that something brilliant. And that's the moment power of the as-a-service model. It's tied to the outcomes. It's tied to the business outcomes that people want and people are willing to pay for. You know the fun part is? Yeah. Most of the times people end up paying more mm -hmm. for that experience. Well, it's quality. We don't mind paying for quality, do we? Exactly. It's, it's really, not, you know, we buy Rolex watches or other brands, Breitling, for example. We buy nice cars because we get quality. We get longevity. We also get trust and... and I think it makes our hearts feel a little bit warm, right? Absolutely. And then, you know, over a period of time, why do you feel like a Rolex is really good? Because there's a trust, there's a reputation that's got created. And that's the beauty of as a service because you're not locked in. You can basically say, you know what? I'm not getting what I want. I'm going to move on to the next player that basically has it. And he's bound or he or she's bound to basically outbeat this person, not on price, but experience. Which is brilliant, Sanjib, no? Experience. So the experience... Matters. Before digitization, it's all about automation. Mm -hmm. Today, digitization is all about experience. Mm -hmm. Experience first, automation follows. Mm -hmm. We live in a world of experience economy. Yeah. You know, everything is your experience. 86% of the customers would pay a little more for a better experience. I know I would. That's what experience matters the most. Yeah. And I feel like, Udav, you said it before as well. We're leading ourselves to all one brilliant word outcome right we're also we're trying to deliver outcome we're not trying to deliver a solution anymore or a service or a product it is experience but that experience often is outcome right it's really yeah, important we are, for us. we are told challenge was that we should sell solutions and capabilities which in turn means a better experience yeah so don't sell tech sell experience sell capability sell mm -hmm. outcomes but that somehow right what up? Selling outcomes, selling experiences. It's, it's the future. going to be the pr primary way that people are going to go to market moving forward. I can't think of any enterprises a few years from now that are not basically focusing on selling outcome as a service mm -hmm. and still selling the whole traditional way of products. Right now, the the transition may happen in steps. Mm -hmm. It may be basically products selling themselves as subscriptions, subscriptions selling themselves as standard as a service offering. But the end goal for everybody is to basically get the outcome as a service. Fantastic. Okay, gentlemen, I think we're nearly out of time. So I'm going to ask you for, for some tips for our audience out there. What three steps can people take tomorrow, the next day, and the next day to improve their digital fitness? How can they start themselves on this journey tomorrow? What's the first simple step they can take, Sanjeev? Three steps will say connect, disrupt, and transform. Wow. Connect with people, 
communicate mm-hmm. connect with compassion you know understand listen disrupt means disrupt your thought process mm-hmm. disrupt yourself disrupt your mindset mm-hmm. to be imperfectly perfect and keep on transforming every single day because transformation never stops brilliant brilliant what up out to assess discover and execute many a times people forget to do the first part of basically doing their self assessment yeah. of how ready as an organization they are the second thing is people try to go at it by themselves most of these problems somebody else has already kind of taken a stab at it discover learn what others have done you can learn and from others failures yes and quickly ad- adapt to what you need to do and the last thing i think most of the people i think this is true with like real world as much as with digital transformations is people will take membership to the gym but never go to the gym i love this this is very similar don't stay on the on the fence yeah. execute start your digital transformation journey start your transformation journey because unless you don't start you're not going to fail but unless you're not going to fail you're not going to basically succeed that's fantastic right? that's brilliant i would say that was, those are the three things for my son that's really brilliant advice and it sounds like uh, cloud blue ingram micro sanjib udav myself everybody were well on the way to becoming aggressively digital but amazingly human no I think you've said that phrase before. I yeah, really like it. I'm going to steal it. I'm sorry, Sandy. No problem. Steal anything you want. Yeah. There's well, no, we'll share it. There's no IP in them. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the beauty, right? Like Ingram as it evolves into a platform company, he's busy basically creating the platform that helps, you know, companies that do business with us evolve. But on the flip side with Cloudly, we are basically building a platform that allows other people that are trying to transform evolve as well. So I think it's brilliant. I think Ingram is going to be at the heart of the digital transformation of the whole uh, distribution and uh, marketplace industry. Oh, I think we're already the heart. I think after this will be the heart, the body and possibly the soul as well. Um, you know, I think once we touch 90% of the world with Ingram and then the extra 10% with Cloud Blue. Hey, it's all about being the spirit, ain't it? Exactly. Absolutely. Show the spirit, be the people, grow like you want to grow. This is the best advice that I've ever heard. Six top tips from Uda from Sanjib. This has been brilliant. I've been your host Ben Hewson. This has been the Global Cloud and Innovation Summit live in Las Vegas at the Aria Hotel. I'd like to say thank you very much. Enjoy. Go on your digital transformation journeys and when you're doing that, don't forget in touch with these two gentlemen who are going to help you lead that charge. Thank you very much. Thank you Ben, it's been thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. Thank you, ben. thank you so much. You've been listening to Ingram Micro's B2B Tech Talk. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode and you want to continue the conversation online, use hashtag #B2B Tech Talk.